Welcome back to The Bulwark Goes to Hollywood. My name is Sonny Bunch. I'm culture editor at The Bulwark. And I'm very pleased to be joined again by the, the first guest, the original initial guest of The Bulwark Goes to Hollywood. He will always have that title. Uh, he will be the only person to ever have that title. Uh, Richard Rushfield of The Ankler. Richard, how are you doing? Fine. Just refer to me as guest one, though. As, 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 uh, <laughs> guest guest number one. Um. I uh, no, I, it's always great to have Richard on. Uh, you you got to you got to read his newsletter, The Ankler, which is growing. We can talk we can talk more a little bit about that uh, in in a bit. I've had Janice Min on the show, of course, your your partner in crime. Absolutely. Um, but we can uh, we can talk uh, a little bit more about the the Ankler's growth here in a few minutes. Um, I want to talk about the the state of Hollywood and specifically kind of what is going on at. Uh, one of the one of the biggest and most storied and legendary studios, Disney. There's there's yeah. lots of buzz around Disney right now. Disney, you know, there there's lots of talk about what's going on with Disney Plus, what's going on with the stock price, uh, and it, and what's going on with the politics. You know, not just internal politics, but also external politics, culture war politics, that sort of thing. Um, what is going on with Bob Chapek, Bob Number Two, in the parlance of the Ankler? Uh, and what is what is uh, what is happening? in in mouse house world well uh, that, i mean it in in the larger mouse house world uh, as, as you suggest uh you know they 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 just can't win on any side it's it, like they are sucked into every maelstrom happening and uh from finance to the culture wars to the streaming wars and they just they just seem to be in the middle of it uh on on, on every side and uh and and getting a hard time but but uh at the bottom you've got you've got this leader who is still finding his footing who is still fairly new to the community who saw the um the company through the through the pandemic uh and all that and is finding his footing and getting right with his own staff there and uh getting right with them by uh by throwing out people that he's not right with or uh, all that so it's 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 a very uh it's a very strange i mean you're you're so used to disney being the paragon of stability and and uh and and just the gold standard of of, of sort of no drama operational uh excellence and and now it just seems there's drama behind every door what do you Phil, let's fill listeners in on what exactly happened uh, in the C-suite. Well, so why 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 was uh, a, such a big change made? It, it, lay out who are the players here. We, we need to know the players. You can't you can't you can't see watch the game without a scorecard. Give us a scorecard of the players. So so you had you had you had Bob Iger retired, uh, suddenly retired, uh, uh, just just literally uh, two weeks before but before lockdown happened a couple of years ago. Uh, but he had been he had, he had he had long been dangling that he was going to retire and possibly run for president. He was the iconic, uh, you know, really the 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 the, the uh, paragon of of uh, CEOs that Hollywood has seen in the last uh, 20 years. They made, made these uh, credible decisions that just ran a very effective uh, company in, uh, in lots of ways. He's two weeks before. Uh, co actually, I mean, I think a day after the first case was reported in the U.S., uh, uh, Bob Iger announces, suddenly announces retirement, hands over the reins to this guy that no one in the media world had ever heard of. Uh, he was on the on the park side, which uh, which who cares about that? Um, all it does is freaking, you know, 40 percent of the revenue or something. But, right. you know, it's not glamorous like the movie job. Um and so, so this this person who's sort of the opposite of Bob, Bob Iger was Mr. Smooth, Mr. Diplomat, and he brings in this person. He, he 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 hands the reins over to this person who is, um, you know, is not is not is sort of a no nonsense, uh, bullet headed NBA type um, who, by all accounts, in, in his past life was very effective as a as a manager and is getting getting things done, which is why. Iger uh, trusted him through all that, but um, you know it's this is and this is Bob Chapek, Bob Chapek, right. Bob the second. Uh, so they, um, so he he passes it off to him. The, the The problem is that you know you can you, you you'd like to say say and maybe in, in Iger's mind when he passes it off, he sort of saw himself as the 
is the Margaret Thatcher figure passing it up, passing the reins off to a John Major who would be a steady hand to just sort of affirm his affirm uh, his policies and and keep the thing running. The problem is you don't you don't get to be a low key out of the spotlight CEO of Disney. Like mm -hmm. you're when 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 you're a CEO of Disney, especially in these days, you are in the center of the crosshairs. Um, in in every possible way and and then with the pandemic uh the, the choices the choices that that which which you know which was like a like a like a bullet towards the heart of disney what with the parks and everything like mm -hmm. uh the parks the cruise lines and theaters all closed yeah i mean no no ceo has ever been handed off uh a challenge like this like having your uh, here's your company by the way you're shutting down for two years um <laughs> so um uh, he, he, but they, but they got through, they survived that largely on the, largely because of Disney plus, because they had, uh, the, the hugely successful launch of Disney plus when, you know, if you, you take it back a few years, um, when Iger first announced they're doing Disney plus, the consensus was, uh, they're way too late getting into the streaming field. Netflix has it locked up and, uh, it's, it's silly to do it now. They should just license their stuff to. To Netflix and 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 move on, uh, and in the face of that, you know, hugely hugely successful, and it's continued to to uh, to have success. The, the the growth has slowed now, but it's continued to have success after success. Um, so that's the basic playing field. Um, he has been this brusque character who has, um, in a very un Disney like way, he had gotten in a fight with Scarlett, jo a very public fight with Scarlett Johansson about her back-end pay that became the 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 Scarlett Johansson's back-end salary became a huge cause celebra um, as a result of that he got he he led the the he, he sort of stumbled then uh, most catastrophically into a uh, fight with Ron DeSantis over the just say uh, the don't say gay bill after after he tried to sort of duck out in a kind of clumsy way clumsy way and most recently, uh, aroused the ire of Hollywood by firing sort of a Hollywood made man and a a a, a player's player, Peter Rice, who uh, had come up from who had come over from being the head of head of Fox to uh, to heading up uh, the the Disney TV division. And uh, just the week before last, he uh, suddenly uh, unexpectedly brought down brought down the axe and and let go of someone, which has in the community, as they say, uh, does inspire the outrage of how could you treat someone like this? How could you treat a valuable employee? Like, uh, yeah. no, no, they, they there, there were no, uh, when, when tens of thousands of employees were being furloughed, there were no demands that like, Oh my God, they, did they get a, did they get full counseling when the, on, on their day off? And did they, did, were they given, uh, housekeeping deals or anything but, but. <laughs> yeah well th well the, the peter rice thing is is fascinating because like you say it was surprising why i mean what what is the in in the weeks that have followed in your conversations with folks beside, behind the scenes what has the thinking been here because i i know when it happened initially everyone basically said well chapek's getting rid of this guy because he is seen as a threat to his to to bob chapek's a position as CEO. This is a potential CEO replacement. He wants he wants Rice out of the C-suite. Is that still the basic thinking, or was there was there was there more to it? I mean, that's the ox, oxum razor on on that. That and it's it's you know a great a great G Disney tradition that you have these sort of imperial CEOs who who serially cut off uh, anybody who who starts to pose a threat to them. It was I Eisner. Eisner pushed out Katzenberg, and then and then Mike Ovitz, uh, Iger fired all sorts of people that 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 were that were getting a little too big for their britches there, um, and uh, you know, but but the di the difference was that they did it from the position of being Hollywood, they were they were Hollywood made men themselves, so they were they, mm -hmm. they were allowed to do these things, whereas Chapek, who remains an outsider, doing it to someone on the inside. Uh, is is questionable but but there i mean there's other things being thrown at that that there's there's suggestions that he was a leaker or that jpeg was very upset that there's you know the official stated reason was he wasn't a cultural fit 
uh, which you know may well have 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 been true. It's uh, it's working being an executive at Disney is all about being a team player and rowing together and being part of the plan. It is not about being an independent operator or uh, like that, which is which which was much more the culture at at uh, at Fox where he came from. Uh, but uh, we still don't know that we there have been there have been a thousand exposés and takes written, including mine, and uh, I don't think we're any close to knowing the actual reason. So uh, mm -hmm. so I default with the oxen oxen razor here that he was a threat. Yeah. I mean, I, that makes some sense. I, I you you uh, recently just put out a newsletter. I, I, as I was saying, it, it was either this morning or yesterday. Uh, it's hard to keep track of, yeah. uh, you know, all of the reading that we have to do. Uh, but basically laying out all of the potential or a, a bunch of the potential uh, studio heads. And I like in terms of the names, you know, some of the people people will probably recognize some of the names, names like Amy Pascal or uh, Ari. Emmanuel, uh, you know, uh, people, people who could could do the job, people who are kind of out there. But I'm just curious, like, what does the, what does the job of a studio head actually entail in the year of our Lord 2022? You know, like, what is it? What is a studio head actually sitting there and doing? What balls is he juggling? What, uh, you know, what decisions is she making? Like, what are what are the, the studio heads actually doing at this point in the, the life of Hollywood? I mean, so in my, in my piece where I talk about the contenders, I, I, I sort of start with by saying uh, there, there, there is no contender for this job because it's an impossible job now. And, um, and, and, and no one, the, the skill set does not exist and it couldn't exist in one person. It's, but, uh, you know, what, what they have become much more sort of corporate types, um, the, the, the traditional the traditional profile was you were you were a film you came out of film development and production, and and people people rose up to that and they're they're much less likely to be film people now, than they are sort of TV or or or, or tech people or sort of general uh, business business people, um, and you know they're they're sort of they're overseeing um, these questions of. The theatrical versus streaming, and uh, and and managing these these gigantic budgets um, in the in the streaming war here that that uh, you know David Zasloff has a fifty five billion dollar debt that he has to uh, deal with, and I, I expect that takes up the bulk of his time. And you so you you know there's there's a lot of lip service to. They have to. They have to be very strong with talent relations and have deep uh, history with with talent now. And David Zaslav, as he came in, has has given a lot of lip service to that because you, they've seen the downfall of uh, what happened with Bob Chapek not not having that and getting the fight with Scarlett Johansson, and then Jason Kylar took up, was was AT and T's head of, uh, of of Warner HBO there and uh, got in all sorts of trouble when when he. Uh, attempted his to to break the window without properly consulting his talent and all that. So those are the cautionary tales of having uh, yeah of of having the the uh, the CEOs who aren't it. So it it it's just this mishmash of uh, of a hundred things that uh, that no one can possibly do. And at the bottom, it's because uh, these studios don't know what they want to be and they don't know. They they haven't they haven't sorted out where they're going and what the direction is and if they sort that out who the natural leader would be would would suggest itself uh, a little better. Yeah, I it, it's interesting to to hear some of these names I, like Jason Keelar, right? Who is, uh, I think I think it's fair to say largely disliked <laughs> in in Hollywood. Uh, is that would that be fair? Uh, he's he, he's liked by a lot of reporters uh, who he's okay. to uh, seems to have on his call sheet there, and 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 who who who, uh, who, who are willing to talk about the uh, the Kylar miracle at uh, sure. At, um, but uh, no, he he was he he's some, he was he was sort of a tech wonderkind, and we're always suspicious of those, uh, rightfully. And and he just came in and he. Uh, he, he he kind of did a lot of things without um, 
with, without consulting the right people, without getting Brian Lord on board with them, and uh, and, and 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 all the all the things you're you're supposed to do. Um, and you know, I I think within the Hollywood community, he's widely considered to have been a disaster, uh, which doesn't mean he won't be heading another studio again soon. <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, Warner Warner has some interesting problems right now. I mean, I like I, I'll I'll give uh, I'll, I'll I will give him credit, uh, Kilar, in in the sense that uh, HBO Max seems to have kind of pulled it together. Um, they have managed to maintain a theatrical slate. Um, you know, the Batman did huge, huge numbers uh, and doesn't seem to have been hurt too bad by uh, showing up on on HBO Max within you know what forty two days, whatever is a shortened window. Um, uh, but you know, they, there, there are a lot of, there are a lot of like lingering problems at WB, the biggest of which seems to be right now, what, what to do with Ezra Miller and the flash. Have you, have you uh, had any rumbles about what might be happening there? Um, the, I mean, the, the rumble I get is that they're trying to, uh, it is that they're holding their breath and hope this problem goes away because, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's a big thing and it's big, it's, it's right in the. Right in the center of DC, which is which is which is really the the big thing that Warner's got there. You take DC you take DC out of the equation, and uh, and uh, it's you know they're Sony essentially. Um, yeah. It's uh, but uh, I, I I think they're 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 studiously trying to avoid the problem. Uh, to uh, they're, they're strenuously trying to avoid avoid addressing the problem at this point. Yeah, uh, I mean, the movie, this is the other thing is that the movie doesn't come out for 53 weeks or I guess now 52 weeks. Uh, so, uh, you know, there there's a lot that can happen. And frankly, you know, there's there are, there's a very long and thoughtful apology tour that could be undertaken. There's, you know, rehab, whatever. I like the people who are you know, writing it off entirely are, I think, counting some counting some graves before they're dug. Well, I, um, I, I think I think for Warners also, they have the they're they're there's sitting on the uh the legacy of the ray fisher uh controversy yeah. where where uh he made he made an accusation that uh that 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 he had been untreated that treated unfairly by that by uh what jo joss whedon. whedon uh on the set there that that could have been his his accusation could have been dealt with they could have could have talked to him they could have could have found a way to make him happy they could have addressed this they could have apologized and it what should have been a one week story became a two year story with a new tick to it every every week and Warner's mistake in all this was they engaged every every single time he would surface again or his fans would surface again or something Warner's would dive right into it and give it give it more oxygen and just keep this thing alive so it went on for two years. This, this, the, this, yeah. the fight against it. What it, it really should have been a one week thing. And I think they, they have learned from that. Uh, don't, don't, don't race to dive right into these uh, big problems. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk. Let's talk. Happy, happy news in Hollywood. You know, we will we'll, we might come back to sad news, more Netflix layoffs on the horizon, even as Netflix says, you know, hey, we're going to we're still spending money. Come make movies with us. <laughs> um, but, you know, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise saving Hollywood, saving the big screen. Uh, or is he you? I when I said this to you, you seem skeptical the other day uh, that, that this that Top Gun Maverick can save theaters. But but it seems to be doing a good job. I mean, yeah, it's a uh, top top gun is doing for, for, for itself. It is, it's, it's doing great. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's certainly a test case of this, of, of, of a cinematic phenomenon can happen. Um, it's, uh, it, it, you know, Paramount is, I'm sure, uh, uh, in heaven over, over how, how it went. Uh, I guess my question is, first of all, um, uh, where's the next? So, what, what's 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 another one? What's what's another one of these that that that's going to come along? Like this is such a special case. Like, Tom Cruise is the last analog movie star. Like there, 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 there isn't another one. There, there, there isn't another person. There's never going to be another person now with that sort of uh, you know maniac, maniacal focus on 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 cinema. 
uh, and and on the theaters like this was to the point of that they that they held on to this movie for years to to, to give it this launch. And I, I don't think there's another another star that has that kind of uh, of uh, big screen devotion. Um, and what's the other project that I mean, this project tapped into all sorts of nostalgia and uh, everything. So, I mean, it, it 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 feels like a unicorn to me and in. in a lot of ways and the other part of it is just that um as great as it is doing you still have um and you you still have kind of an, a, a starved um you know we've got we got basically three movies out right now um and it's 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 not a healthy landscape for theaters you can't they can't i mean we're, we're converting to the 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 broadway model which is uh movies will be a uh a a big event that people go to once or twice a year uh when when there's something really special but but we they're they're turning off the last people that that would go to one or two go to one or two movies a month now because there's just not Mm -hmm. not the product there for that anymore and i don't know the way broadway theaters survive is they is with that is they charge $300 $300 for tickets or, or whatever it's uh so I you know I don't know if at $10 a pop how 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 this is a sustainable model for them but yeah yeah no it's uh it's interesting it's interesting and uh I mean I I think you you basically have the the the, the problem right is that you have the the ceilings are as high as they ever were but the floor is so much lower yeah um that it it it's hard to 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 figure out what exactly to do um i mean it, it, it and i yeah and i'm i'm confused about that too because uh you know traditional answer is put out more grown-up dramas and more mid-range uh uh specialty films and everything but uh nobody's coming to see those so uh so i you know i i i can't totally fault the studios for not just uh go once more into the breach uh with those yeah. things but curious i'm curious to see how how elvis does this weekend because that's the sort of movie that like in theory should you know that's the uh you know it's gonna attract a wide diverse array of ages and and genders and everyone's gonna want to come see that but i i don't actually know who this movie is for i i it is a it is baffling to me the the marketing for it i i i uh I, I mean, I don't know if it's a marketing, even or just a question of the movie. It's uh, that that it, does it does I, I don't think that anyone under our age uh, knows or cares about Elvis in a way that like Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean, those songs were still or, or, or Elton John. Those those those, those songs right. are still ubiquitous in a way that Elvis isn't um, as a like cultural figure it just seems like i mean you know you might as well be be about lily langtree or something it's uh, just <laughs> from another uh another universe yeah. and then you have a uh an unknown star who hasn't proven himself as a uh, uh as uh you know teen girl bait yet uh, yeah so I, but and you've got Fatsu Tom Hanks. Don't forget Fatsu Tom Hanks. Yeah, well, that <laughs> very exciting. I mean, if they wanted to get us, they 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 should have been the whole movie about Fat Elvis in Vegas. That's 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 <laughs> that's the movie I'm waiting for. Uh, yeah. The... Uh, so what what is what's going on with Netflix, the the great disruptor? I mean, I uh, you know every every day you hear a, a different headline that's bad. You know, like lay, again layoffs. Uh, we're not we're not you know green lighting all of these vanity projects. You know, <laughs> blah blah blah. And then they try and come back a couple days later. It's like, no, no, we're still spending money. We're still we're still making deals. We can come make movies for us. What is the what is the mood in uh, in Hollywood right now about where Netflix stands and how reliable they are as a, a producing partner? I, mean, I think it's 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 a mystery, and people are 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 waiting, are, you know, sort of waiting for the tree to fall there or something or something like that. It. I mean, I, I think clearly on the, the film side, uh, despite despite all statements, they they, they certainly want to want to become much more of a traditional film company, uh, including theatrical releases to, to, to as, as part of it. 
Um, they want to be making a smaller number of, of, of bigger, bigger and better. I mean, that's that's clearly where they where they would like to go. Um, and stop making seventy movies a year is just uh, you know there there's no there there's no quality there's no possibility of quality control when you're doing when you're mm-hmm. seventy movies a year to triple triple the slate of any other studio. Um, yeah. The on the TV side, I just I th- I think they are flailing in all directions, and um, everything I hear I I hear there is, um, you know, I mean, as, as hard as it is to get a movie in production, to get to 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 find a whole show that can sustain multiple seasons, and to, to get to get that whole operation going, that's a that doesn't turn on a dime there, and um, I think their executive ranks had been kind of depleted and 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 uh and confused about the directions but before this and uh um i from everything i've heard um you know i the 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 one thing they they know is they're they're moving away from the prestige world like that that had been so much of the thing so it's a much more broader uh market they're going to but uh easier said than done yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. It's always interesting to see what what works for them by their own standards. I like I was just looking at the uh, the you know, the top 10 shows and movies watched each uh, each week by millions of hours, whatever uh, the, the data that they release. Uh, and the number the number one movie for the last two weeks has been uh, the new Adam Sandler movie. Right. Hustle. Yeah. The Adam Sandler, LeBron James movie. It's doing huge numbers for them. 135 million, whatever. Well, I think he, he's million always, hours watched. I think he's always a huge hit for them. And he, he's always a huge hit. He's always a huge hit for them. And they, the new I, like, I don't know that Spiderhead counts as like a prestige movie, but it's a movie from a name director, uh, at least within Hollywood. J- Joseph Kaczynski. People will, people will recognize now as the director of Top Gun Maverick. But, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and stars Chris Hemsworth and it's got Miles Teller in it. And that movie, it, it did about 35 million hours watched last week. That's not, you know, it's not nothing, but it's also not exactly a, a hit for them. It's certainly compared to Hemsworth's uh, Extraction, right? Which did, you know, uh, 120 million accounts watched for two minutes or whatever, whatever numbers they were using back then. Um, uh, we'll have to get the entertainment strategy guy to, to break it all down for us yeah. uh, numbers wise. Um, but he is he is one of the writers in your stable. Let's talk a little bit about Ankler Growth. You guys raised uh, you guys raised some money. Yeah. We got we got a valuable property here. What's going on? Uh, we 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 are a uh, we we announced our raise. Uh, we the we we had gone through tech boot camp. Uh, Janice Min, my my partner and I, uh, we went through the Y Combinator tech boot camp, uh, and uh, so we were uh, we we have we have raised money to turn this into a. Uh, and a, a full blown trade publication of a of of a, of a different sort, a new sort, and we're we're finding that out. So uh, you know, we're going to begin uh, slowly. We raised a little bit of money. We didn't raise, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Semaphore announced today that they they raised, uh, which is a startup from Ben Smith of Buzzfeed, and I'll say they they raised uh, twenty five million. So we are a uh, small fraction of that. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but, but it's, it's in terms of, you know, we, we went into this thinking that there's a huge opening in the trade space to do something that that's, that's really compelling and, uh, and, and meaningful to particularly people who work in the industry. And now we've got the money to, uh, the, the backing to begin pursuing that. So we're going to be looking for writers and projects that can really speak to that and really, uh, try to try to command a big a big portion of that space yeah uh well like i said it's one of my favorite newsletters i read it uh all the time the, you guys just added a, a guy who's doing morning roundups which has been extremely helpful for me uh just being able to go one stop you know okay this is what's going on at the trades today i don't have to go to variety and hollywood reporter and everywhere else um so it's uh that's very useful great yeah he's uh he's 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 a wild man who was doing that on his own and uh and 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 we brought him in and it's uh you know the morning roundup thing is uh i i, I tried i i tried to it's shockingly hard to get right uh it's hard it's hard to get right it's just hard to do every day i mean yeah. it's like that's a that's a real grind that's like a whole day's work before you know 8 a.m or whatever and you you have to have thoughts that you can present in basically one or two sentences and, and yeah. i i I'm I'm not able to think in under 500 word 
length. So every, every time I, every, every time I, I, I took many stabs at trying to do a morning newsletter myself and it, it ended up being like 50 paragraph essays on, uh, on, on a couple of topics, but, uh, he's, he's terrific. He's, uh, he's, he's someone who's a professional in the industry and, and knows it really well and, uh, presents it in a very zippy manner there. Yeah. Uh, well, I, uh, as you know, I always like to close by asking if there's anything I should have asked. What do you think folks should know about uh, what's going out in Hollywood and the world of entertainment? Uh, well, here's, here's, here's the mystery I, I encountered this morning. It tipped off, uh, uh, when you talk about the the uh, unraveling light year, uh, I was I was tipped off. Uh, go to your 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 big store there, whatever it is, Walmart or Target in my case, and uh, and 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 take a look how many light year toys there are on the shelves. And uh, and I, I find the Target shelves are are the most uh, sensitive indicator of uh, of of, of uh, excitement when the family audience is because if something's not moving, they will take that stuff off the shelf in a second, yeah. and you can you can you can see what studios are really supporting, excited about. Uh, so I took a look and remember that the 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 one thing about Lightyear is it it has a it it has a toy at the center of it, not not just Buzz Lightyear, but but the the cat uh, the robot cat, the cat there. The talking cat. Yeah. Um, so you would assume you'd see robot cats everywhere. And uh, I searched up and down the aisles and could not find a light year toy any, anywhere uh, in this. There's lots interesting. of interesting. I saw a bunch of Thor stuff, uh, which is which is coming out. I saw it. I mean, it's practically exploding with Jurassic Park toys. But uh, that the robot cat definitely is not on the shelves. So uh, it makes you makes you wonder, were they not? Did did they smell that there were problems here? Or is the Pixar merchandising machine just sort of so out of practice that they just that they just didn't have? I mean, because these things, you know, aligning the toy launches with a a movie. I mean, that that's usually set up years out. And you're, I mean, they yeah. they take pitches from the toy manufacturers two two three years before the movie comes out. So you 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 just wonder is the is the machinery rusty there or or what is going on but uh i was i was that, that that's my re on the ground reporting today <laughs> no that's it that is interesting i hadn't even thought about that but uh next time i head over to target i will check because i i do uh when i go to target i do notice the uh abundance of uh you know jurassic world right now obviously right. is very very uh big uh you know there are the kind of stalwarts eternal uh eternal properties like bluey bluey huge always yeah. uh shelves full of bluey stuff but uh yeah i have not seen any uh i cannot think of any you know light year toys yeah. uh, on the shelves it's, it's, which is which is when, interesting when when people talk about how uh when 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 the young folk talk about how jk rowling has destroyed her her, her reputation or cultural value i say i say go over target and count the number of things that jk rowling is getting a a, a cut of of there and then, then tell me how how ruined she is <laughs> this point yeah, i mean it's like yeah. it's like half the store still yeah uh all right well thank you very much richard for being on the show uh once again go just google the yankler you'll you'll easily find him uh and sign up for at least sign up for a free account if you like what you what you're what you're reading make sure to get the uh the full experience it's well worth it i i can uh, promise you again it's one of my must reads every every day now at this point it feels like it's it's you know you guys are you guys are expanding thanks good. so much uh and thanks for having me it's great it was always fun uh, uh my name is sunny bunch i'm the culture editor at the bulwark and i will be back next week with another episode of the bulwark goes to hollywood see you guys then <laughs>